Hey guys, David Robinson here. Welcome to the Apartment Investing Journey. Another great guest for you today. Another great episode. I'm excited to have Matthew Teifke with me today. Matthew, how you doing? I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me on. I'm super excited. Well, uh, Matthew is, uh, is an individual that's been in the real estate world for all of his professional life, from what I can tell. And uh, he's got his hands in a lot of different things, from brokerage to property management to investing. And so, Matthew, why don't you take a moment and just give uh, our listeners a brief overview of what your business looks like today? Yeah, so today um, there's a couple components. We're really big on, uh, we call it entrepreneurial. So our uh, our company's TRE, and when you kind of spell that out, you know, you got oh, TRE cool. right there. So we like it, uh, yeah. but it's something that we believe in and that we try to embody. So we, me and my partner is typically, when I say we, uh, we own pretty much everything 50-50. And um, we have 30% of a construction remodeling company called Longhorn Construction that we own. And we really help on the business development, the marketing and the growth side, bringing in leads there. Uh, we own uh, TRE, the real estate brokerage, 100%. And that is about 135 real estate agents. And we really promote that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, we kind of say, come here and make money in and on real estate. Uh, you know, come work with us, not for us. And we try to really look at agents as partners more than anything. And then uh, we manage properties. We have a uh, wholesaling company, me, Alex, and a girl named Doreen. And then we buy real estate. Um, so we have close to about 65, 70 units. Um, that we own. And it's kind of varied on what type of property. So we have small little mobile home park, 14 units. We've got a 19 unit apartment, an eight unit apartment, uh, some single family, some Airbnbs, and then two assisted living uh, properties. And so uh, we love real estate, man. And we love the uh, idea of creating generational wealth, uh, creating freedom uh, through real estate for time and financial purposes. And heads down, working hard, and you know we feel very blessed. Uh, we call Austin where we're at Opportunity City, and um, there's just jobs and people moving here every day. So we are uh, trying to build this company the best way possible. We have a 30, 40 year type mindset with everything we do, and really, really value uh, finding the right people and figuring out how to go grow together with them. And uh, just you know, million miles an hour. Uh, you know, at any given day, you got. 20 to 30 real estate agents trying to get a hold of me. They're, they got their closings. We got our closings and uh, just living the entrepreneurial life, man. Love it. Love it. Well, and uh, with multiple businesses, yeah, it sounds like uh, things are busy and exciting for you right now. Um, our podcast is all about the journey. And so we'd love to back up and sort of explore together uh, what it's taken over the years for you to get to where you're at today. And so if you don't mind, let's back up. Where did this all begin for you? Yeah, uh, really started with me being introduced to real estate through my mom, um, single mom, raised my brother and myself, and literally was, uh, I remember she was literally cleaning houses. And over time, she was buying one to two properties a year, um, you know, she cleaned houses for four or five years, and then she started working at a family construction business, was doing uh, decent there, making a good salary. And she would literally just put every dollar she made into buying rental properties. And so she bought uh, two, one, two, three a year for eight, nine years. And uh, by the time I was 17 or 18, I think she had like 16, 17 houses. And it was very interesting. I, uh, I learned a couple of things that I, I try to point out. Uh, one, uh, the commitment that it takes to make that happen. And two, what it means uh, to have those properties. So, you know, at, growing up is like, uh, I would say that's probably middle class or a little bit above it in a sense of net worth and assets. But we didn't like go around spending money. You know, it was it was like we have these properties, but, you know, there's taxes and there's expenses. And so for me, it was interesting to learn how to do it, but what it meant in the sense that you go get 20 properties, but it, that doesn't mean that you are well off and ready to retire. Uh, you can be in 30 years, um, but it was very interesting for me to see that. So that's what really introduced me to real estate. And I'm happy to go through it as much as you want, but it's been uh, 
12 years now of like me really just going all in on real estate. Okay, great. So uh, at 17 years old, your mom had acquired 17 houses uh, as a single mother, uh, an incredible example of hard work and, you know, discipline, financial discipline to be able to acquire, you know, 17 rental properties. Uh, and then when did you start to really get involved in the space? Uh, I know that you uh, had gone to school. Uh, I believe you went to Texas A&M. Is that correct? And then yep. you went uh, you went on and got a master's in real estate. And, uh, and, and so maybe just shed some light on what that time in your life looked like from going to school to then deciding, hey, I'm really going to attack this real estate thing myself uh, and follow the example that my mom had set. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the mindset was big to, to understand uh, what's possible with real estate and how to do it. I mean, once I learned, like, you go put a down payment and then somebody pays it off for you. It's as simple as I like to think about it. I was really hooked, uh, but I had worked all different types of jobs. Um, and I, I can remember I was working at Wingstop and I was mopping the floor at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. I think we closed at 12 and it was Friday or Saturday and all my friends were out and I was like, this, this is just horrible. Like I hate looking at this clock waiting for it to get off. And so I think that was somewhat of a turning point for me. Uh, but got my license in college, uh, my sophomore year and I went all in, man. I was, uh, you know, wearing a suit and tie first one in the office, last one out going to class when I had to, I was in class and I just couldn't wait to get out. And, uh, what happened is my grades really started dropping, but I was doing well at real estate. I had a guy that would sit down with me for an hour a day and teach me. And it was very valuable. And, you know, I, I sold like maybe four or five houses. I did like 10 leases, but I just loved it. I loved every second of it. I loved the sales aspect. I loved the learning. My, my whole thought was I want to go and do what my mom did, but I want to really learn it. Um, what I considered like the bottom up, like learn how to help other people lease, learn how to help other people buy, then buy. And so I always had a really big commitment to, to real estate knowledge and learning. And uh, at the time, just where my mind was, I was really competitive with this. I was like, I want to be the the 17 year old that's working harder than any other 17 year old in the entire world thinking about real estate. Right. And I would, I would type in, you know, real estate on Google three times a day. I type in commercial real estate. I just read articles. And then when I was 18, I was like, I want to do the same thing. And, you know, just always kind of stuck with that mentality. Uh, over time, I've, uh, it's not like important to me. It's important to work hard and be committed, but I don't need to, you know, compete and all that. But um, I was just always like super dedicated to, to being really, really good at it. And I worked at a local mom and pop brokerage, um, learned a lot. They that all these brokerages that I worked at, what I realized over time is subconsciously the, the things that I liked or didn't like kind of stuck with me to kind of create what we have now. But they were pretty entrepreneurial. They did property management and they sold some ranches and uh, really good reputation. Kind of, you know, like I said, mom and pop, but like down home, you know, I didn't go through Keller Williams or Coldwell Banker. I didn't have that training program. I just kind of jumped in and figured out from like asking questions and seeing what other people did. And then uh, what happened was, <clears throat> you know, I did like decent uh, for college. Like I was, I think I made like, 12 grand. And then I made like 30 grand and my senior year, I made like 45, but it, you could just feel the the compound effect. Right. And like, I knew, and this was in Corpus Christi A&M where, where I went to undergrad and I knew like, Hey, next year I'm going to make more. And I'm going to, you know, you just kind of know in real, that's what I love about real estate. It's got that snowball compound effect. Um, but I really wanted to be back in Austin. Um, there's just so much more opportunity. It's a cooler place in some aspects. And so I came home, uh, but to back up a little bit, I learned about this uh, master's program. There's a master's in real estate from A&M. And knowing that I wanted to do this for my whole career and you know, back to that mindset of I want to be the best at this, I was like, I have to get into this program. And I wasn't like uh, the best uh, student as far as like my grades were decent. I think I had like a, you know, 3.1 or something, but 
I couldn't get into A&M or UT uh, out of high school. And so I'm like, man, I don't, yeah, that, that A&M Corpus is a different, it's a, it's a much lower level as far as competitiveness. And so I was looking at that and I really, really wanted to get in. And I, I didn't think I was able to, I was like, that's going to be competitive. Like there's, it's a small program. You got to come from a, a better school coming from AM Corpus, a little bit helpful, but hopefully my, uh, my real estate background will be really helpful because not a lot of people had that. They just went through undergrad and went straight there. Um, but my senior year, I learned about this program and then I realized like, I got to get my grades up. So I started mm-hmm. then going a little bit more hardcore towards school did decent. I think I got end up like a 3.7 that year and went there to a interview and turn in my application. And there was a six month gap from when I graduated college to figuring out if I got accepted to a and college station. So I came back home. I worked for a commercial brokerage uh, called Don Quick. It was a really good family reputation. They sold a ton of commercial real estate in Williamson County. And took the same mindset, you know, first one in, last one out, found a mentor, they teaching me every day. And then eventually I got the letter, I got accepted and I was, you know, super pumped up, but also at the same time, kind of at a crossroads of like, I'm actually at a a really good company already. And so it was like the second time that I had to kind of start over, you know, as far as like, you start to get those commissions coming in, but the two guys that I worked with both were like, Hey man, you absolutely need to go to this. Hmm. And so I took their advice. Uh, I did that for a year and a half. And, uh, while I was there, uh, I was like, Hey, let me, uh, learn this commercial side. But I, I started working at an apartment doing leasing and then I got my appraiser's license and I was like, let me just build the best uh, foundation and background I possibly can. Uh, so I can take this and go utilize it for the next 30 years uh, in real estate. And so, um, yeah, man, it was quite a journey. Um, and I was, I was shocked that I got in there and it was a different world for me. I I was, it was so over my head at the beginning. Like I was learning about IRR and and NPV and I didn't, I couldn't grasp this stuff. Like I was, I'm decent at, uh, sales and, and talking to people, but like the technical math side, I, I had to go into the teacher's office after every single class but I was determined, like, I, I got to figure this out. And eventually I did. And uh, yeah, man, it's been a, you know, there's been a couple other brokerages uh, since then, but been a, been a process and a journey. And I'm curious, just sort of a, a side note, um, in hindsight, do you feel like the master's program was worthwhile? And would you do it the same way again? Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple of things about it. And I tell people, um, if you have the ability to do it as far as like uh, you can afford it uh, and also it works out with like your career and you want to be in real estate for the rest of your life, I highly recommend it. Mm. So it was very uh, financial driven, but it was also a very, very good uh, foundation that it helped build. So we did like real estate appraisal taught by a commercial appraiser. Uh, real estate law taught by a real estate attorney and a has got a really good uh, network and, and community. And so every Friday we would have a speaker come in and talk to the class. It'd be pretty uh, big time real estate guys like, you know, CEO of Heinz or, or JLL or CBRE, like big time guys. And then we get to go have lunch with them. Hmm. So you, you, you build a network, which I learned along the journey was extremely important. Um, but the big thing for me is it really gave me a confidence, uh, to know that I've put in the work and I've studied it. And I personally believe that I can, and sit in any room and talk real estate with anybody. Um, and I do believe that that program was a big part of me saying that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, let's talk, I want to touch briefly on, you know, building a brokerage and what inspired you to to, to start TRE and how have you gone about growing it? You know, uh, growing a, a, a real estate brokerage to 150 agents is no small feat. Um, let's start there. What inspired you to go that route versus, you know, staying focused on just 
uh, doing your own deals mm -hmm. inside of another brokerage versus starting your own? And then what did it take to, to grow that to 150 agents plus? Yeah, I always wanted to have my own business um, since looking at that clock, right? And uh, real estate seemed like it was that. And so actually our core focus as a company right now, like I said earlier, is make money in and on real estate. So knowing that I wanted to own real estate, uh, but I was going to build up to that spot by you know, building and understanding how other people did it, it just made sense to, to do both. And um, been, a, been a journey, man. But back to the whole subconscious viewing brokerages and trying to input it into our brokerage, I feel like um, through my career, I've seen things in a different way than a lot of brokers in the sense that like I've done residential, I got the master's, I've done commercial. Uh, when I graduated college, I worked at a high-end retail brokerage for three years called Edge. And so I've gotten to see like, the, there's like these different worlds that exist within real estate. And I really believe that once you see it and you understand it, you don't necessarily have to stick with one. You can do multiple things. And most brokerages don't promote that or believe in that, or even really know what that is. Like they don't understand hard money or wholesaling, or, you know, they won't let you manage properties. And so I've tried to take all of that uh, to come up with this vision that, we want, we want to be the brokerage um, or part of a, a, a bigger vision to explain that one, there's opportunities for everybody within real estate. And it comes from my passion of like, you know, my mom, I saw my mom do this. I saw a single mom could do this. I believe that. And it, it changed my life. And I believe that that's possible for everybody. And I just want to help, you know, if people want to do that, I want to get that vision out there that, you can come change your life with real estate and it doesn't have to be only business. You can constantly seek to get better as a person, better spiritually, wh whether you believe in God or not, like you can transform yourself and real estate. It seems like uh, what's interesting to me, there's a lot of people that are just seeking to be better in, in, in real estate. And so, uh, man, the, the process of growing it has been get clear on what we're trying to do, which is, be the place that teaches people how to get more out of real estate for themselves and look at people as partners. We don't really want to say, what's your sales volume? Like, come make us more money. Like, get that sales volume up. It's like, hey, do some sales, but do some flips and do this and do that. And as you probably know, like, and there's not like this is the only way or the best way, but some brokerages say you can't do management or you can't do this. And I totally get it. You get like really, really great at that thing. But also, I believe part of this has been being in Austin, where it's very competitive. And it, it kind of forced me to think outside of the box and get creative. And so it was getting clear on the vision. And then the growth has really come from really intensely uh, meeting a lot of people. Like I was meeting four to five people a day, seriously, for, for four or five years. I mean, it, I'm a little burnt out on it. Uh, but it was really good to build a network. And then we personally do a ton of stuff on the marketing side as well. Like mm. we've got a podcast, we're putting out YouTube videos and posting on every platform and just trying to get the message out. Like if you want to do this, which I believe is possible, you can, but let's, let's kind of show you like it's hardcore and it's not what is painted on TV and, or wherever you're looking. Um, and it doesn't mean that you go retire when you buy five or even 20 properties. Uh, but if you want more, like, let's go do it together. And it's, and it's all possible. And there's having that passion uh, to change you know, my life and, and other people that want to come grow with us. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Setting that vision and, and, and having that vision on display and have it be genuine too. Uh, you can tell just, you know, I can tell just in this conversation that that's a genuine vision. You know, some people will put, you know, uh, a, a vision statement out that really isn't ingrained in their DNA. And, and I can tell that's different for you. So let's uh, let's move on to the investing side of your business. And, and granted, we've got, you know, I think you mentioned five different businesses that you're involved in and have ownership in, if not 100%, uh, down to like 30% from property management to construction, brokerage, wholesaling, and the investing. Let's talk uh, briefly about the investing side of your business. What does that look like? You mentioned that you've in, invested in, a, in a, 
a wide range of asset types. And so if you can, just give us a brief synopsis of sort of your investing thesis and, and how you go about that side of your business. Every dollar that we make to the penny, we put into real estate and, and we get it to a point where uh, we challenge ourselves. Like at any given time, we've got, you know, two or three properties under contract, you know, closing in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And we don't have the money straight up. And we just somehow, by the grace of God, in my opinion, uh, we always figure it out. And so it's literally just take every single dollar. I don't buy anything other than real estate. I mean, buy like nice bottle of wine here or there and some good dinners. But me and my partner, we both drive Priuses. Um, we got a s small little office that we're renting the other side out and it's a duplex and we literally just grind and figure out, it's like, we like love the, the thrill and the challenge. And I don't know, man, I've thought about it a lot lately. Like people are like, well, what's, what's the end goal? And, and I'm sure there's end goals, but at, at the end of the day, it's like, we're all just living life. Like ultimately we're just having fun. We're just having fun with and doing it the best way we can. And it, it can be like, there's, it's not by any means all easy and nice. I mean, it is stressful and, and challenging and nights where I'm sitting there like, I really, really don't know how we're going to do this. And, and somehow we always do. And uh, if we don't, we, we drop a contract and we move on. Um, yeah. But we just, we take every dollar we make in and put it on and um, <laughs> we just figure it out, man. And like, we'll, we're all about uh, partnerships with the right people. Um, so all these, you know, just like you've seen with the, the businesses I described on all the properties I have, I have, you know, another partner or two, uh, but really it's me and Alex at the core of partner on everything. And then um, we, we're just open to anything that we can keep. Like the, every market obviously is different, but my philosophy is any, any way you can find and keep real estate here in Austin, do it and just keep it. And it's, you're not buying for cash flow here. Unfortunately, I, I wish we were, it just doesn't really exist. And so it's like the worst example, which we don't have this, but I would be okay with it. It's like, if a property was to be negative cash flow, a thousand dollars a month, but that thing's going up 40 K a year, that's probably a good investment from the way I view it. Uh, I know that's some people say it's crazy and this and that, but, um, I try to be smart. Like, uh, the fundamentals are strong people and jobs are coming here. And you try to offset some of that, uh, you know, risk with making money on management or on brokerage. And uh, we just are like 100% committed, man, to buy as, buy as much property as we can. And uh, not not to like go buy nice things. We just, we enjoy it. And we like doing it with other people. And we're young. Yeah. And it's like, let's just, let's keep growing. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned, you know, the that you just want to buy anything that you feel like you can buy and hold on to you want to try to buy. How do you differentiate between what you're pursuing from the wholesaling side of your business versus the investing, the buy and hold side of your business? Yeah, great question. So um, in general, the way I view things, uh, even as a brokerage is if, if I'm looking at an opportunity, number one is to buy. And this is in order, right? First, I want to buy it. Second, I want to wholesale it. Third, I want to list it. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know any brokerages that say that, right? Um, <clears throat> so the, the deciding factor between buy and wholesale is a little tricky because it's really dependent on the price, right? Like there is a price that we'd buy it, but on every deal, there should be a price that we would also not buy it. And so it just depends. Like, you know, we could, we could buy this deal and make a couple hundred grand over the next five years. Or we could go make 50 grand or 100 grand right now. And how do we make that trade off? But then what other deals do we have in the pipeline? Like, do we need that cash? So it's just kind of back to the, we always figure it out. Maybe three of those deals, we end up wholesaling to buy the other one, right? Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, we would prefer to buy. If we had unlimited cash, we would just never wholesale. Um, but we only wholesale when we need that cash to go buy more. Yeah. And uh, how... How do you, so do you approach every piece of real estate that you pursue 
as a buyer first and then go through that waterfall approach. So is mm -hmm. all your marketing and every all your initial conversations geared towards buying uh, the property and then it sort of goes through that waterfall mm -hmm. of if we can't buy it, can we wholesale it? If we can't wholesale it, can we list it? Is that little, the methodology? A little bit. Um, so I'm not personally spending uh, like 10 hours a day finding deals. I have done that. Uh, for a long time, but we are building the brokerage. Mm -hmm. So the, the marketing is uh, geared towards showing people what's possible and what you can do and recruiting agents to come join the team. We're finding deals through our agents. Mm -hmm. We like Makes sense. back to, so we market to the agents, but then I really try, Hey, Mr. Or Miss agent, like, let me come with you to meet with the seller. And then we would approach it in that kind of waterfall that you said. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And so at this point in time, out of all the businesses that you're currently involved in, um, which do you devote the, the most of your time? Is it the brokerage business at this point? Yeah, it's the brokerage. And uh, it's, it's interesting because it's like, it's not the biggest money maker by any means. Uh, we spend a lot of, you know, we do a 90-10 split with the 15K cap. And we've got uh, three full-time employees, uh, you know, so it's like, it just yeah. kind of sustains itself. Uh, but the but it's it, it seems that that is the catalyst for fueling the other ancillary businesses that you have. Yeah, absolutely. It helps build the brand. It helps us find more deals. Um, it's the lowest moneymaker, but by far it's the most important. Yeah, I can see that. Well, um, let's talk uh, briefly in the time that we have left here. Tell me about either your first deal that you bought as a buy and hold investment or a notable deal that you bought as a buy and hold investment. Let's just talk through that. Notable in the sense of like, it's pretty interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. interesting or a big win or maybe a big loss. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, my first deal was I actually bought a condo. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. I, I bought a condo in College Station for sixty-one thousand, um, and I was able to get financing. So my down payment was like fifteen k. And then uh, what happened was when I was leaving, I actually owner financed it to somebody else, and he gave me thirty k down payment, and he paid seventy-five thousand. And about two months later, uh, he's in jail for uh, moving a large amount of marijuana. And uh, in your got, in your condo, <laughs> I probably, you know, <laughs> and I got no judgment on him for that. But uh, he went to jail and, you know, this was a this was like kind of weird for me because I'm like, he's giving me this money and I'm like, man, I've never done this. It's kind of creative. Uh, I like it. You know, he's paying me. My mortgage was like uh, four hundred and fifty dollars a month. He's paying me like eight fifty or something. And uh even through jail, he made his payments every, you know, every really? month. And uh, I still talk to this guy and like, I just respect him so much for that. And then like, mm. uh, probably three years ago, he called me. He's like, Hey man, I, uh, I want to uh, pay it off and, uh, I want to pay it off right now. I'm about to drive to Austin and bring you some cash. <laughs> Did he pay it off? He paid it off in cash. And oh, I was like, Oh, Okay. Did he uh, just get another drug deal done? <laughs> I don't know. Wow. That, was, that was an interesting one for sure. Yeah, that is. Let's uh, let's talk real quick about one of your multifamily deals. You mentioned a couple apartment buildings that you own. Um, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about, I think you mentioned a 20 unit, maybe an eight unit. Um, either yeah, one yeah. of those, something that we could dive into. One in Lano uh, that I just closed on like two months ago. And then there's another one, if it's a value uh, I'm negotiating on, it's 33 units in San Marcos. And I've kind of stuck firm at my price. And these other buyers have kind of been talking about it. And now literally today, I saw this broker randomly at a coffee shop and it's still available. I'm like, mm. come on, man, like, let's get this done. We're, we're 100K off. And he's like, yeah, it's, you know, just, just pay it. I'm like, dude, I want to, but I have to buy... I got to buy the good deals. Yeah. I got to be aggressive and make the money on the buy. He's like, he, he's like, it is a good, good deal. It's like, then why are you buying it? And he's, and he is the type of guy that would buy. And, he, and he, I'm like, see, like, you know, so anyways, uh, 
he told me today, he's like, if they, if there's one more guy, he's like, I'm going to call you today. If they pass, like you're getting the deal. And we've been holding firm. We're not getting a steal. It's 33 mm-hmm. units. We're, we're going to be paying, uh, if we get it, 3 million, 50,000. And then I've got a commission in there, which is the key. Um, I don't know if enough people talk about this, but I'm representing myself. And so if there's a hundred grand commission in there, right? So my down payment would be like 600 K, uh, but I'd be getting a hundred thousand to put towards that, which is huge. And honestly, I'd probably go get uh, two or three partners uh, to go buy this with. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, but we just closed on 17 units in Lana, which is a really small market West of Austin. And it's one of these little small Texas towns uh, river that runs through it and there's literally there's four apartments in this market it's a small market mm-hmm. like there's maybe like two thousand people that live there uh but it's right outside of austin there's a river it's beautiful and i'm just sitting there thinking i think one day this this city is going to be a, a lot more popular than it is now and even as is it it kind of maybe cash flows like two thousand uh a month we don't pull that money out because it's most likely going to you know, need that money. So we just leave it in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a long-term hold. And then we got the, we have an eight unit in uh, New Braunfels. Uh, we paid 515,000 for that one. Uh, eight units, they rented at like 850 to $900. And uh, those would be, if I can get that one in San Marcos, I'll be pretty happy with that little portfolio of apartments. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, um, have you ventured outside? I mean, obviously you mentioned, you know, a tertiary market there, um, outside of Austin, one of those, that 17 unit, but have you, uh, have you thought about investing in other markets that may be able to produce better cash flow, or are you sort of set on investing right there in greater Austin? I'm open to like, I'm pretty set personally on Austin. Uh, I would love to like we have a brokerage office in Corpus Christi where I started and we got one in Houston, four agents in Houston, seven in Corpus. Um, I don't know if you've ever kind of run through, you know who Tremel Crow is or ever Mm -mm. done any, he was a developer. Um, pretty cool, uh, story. I mean, one of the all time industrial developers and his model was to go find partners, uh, all over the world and develop with them. And I really believe in that. And that's what we've done in Houston and in Corpus is, their partners, they own a percentage of the brokerage there. And so I would absolutely love to buy real estate in other markets, but I would really base it on teaming up with somebody. Cause as you know, like, you know, it's easy to, if you don't know what you're doing, it's easy to go wrong. And I don't want to be the guy that comes to a new market and is like buying the deal that no one else wanted to buy. Right. Yeah. And that definitely doesn't happen in Austin. I'm on the yeah. flip side of that. So yeah, you definitely I would love have a to competitive advantage right there in your backyard. Yeah. So, um, I would absolutely love to, I, I dream about, uh, this concept of cash flow cause we don't see it here. <laughs> um, but I would, I would base it on, you know, having a good partner that I trust and can help. Cause I, and I don't think people talk about this enough, but the management side is just so important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Matthew, this has been a great conversation. I know we've sort of jumped uh, around a little bit, um, but it's been very interesting. And I love hearing about, you know, sort of your approach to this uh, to this world of real estate where um, specialty and really niche focus is often talked about as the right path. You've sort of gone the other direction and have been very entrepreneurial about it and have your hands in a lot of different things and uh, a lot of different types of business and asset types as well. Uh, I want to start winding down our conversation here a little bit, uh, but I've got a few final questions for you. The first is, what's uh, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now in your businesses? I think it's the same as everybody, man. Just uh, personally, it is uh, figuring out where to spend my time. Like I, I've spent so much time doing the networking thing and I care about people and I want to help, but I have this internal struggle of like, I got to be smart with my time and I want to meet with people that are serious about what they do. That's like a, a real challenge. Like, sorry, like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm at this point and I don't know the solution because um, I can't go meet with everybody and I want to go deeper with the people that are serious and that are doing stuff. Um, so kind of figuring out how to uh, shield myself from, you know, 
some of these meetings, but to do it in a good way where I'm still mm-hmm. helping people. Um, and then on the have social you, media, uh, have you developed any strategies around that? Is there any no. tips or tactics that might I've, be helpful to someone else that's in a similar spot? So I had a meeting today. Uh, I told this guy like uh, two, two quick stories. Uh, this guy came in, I, I was telling myself like this next year, I'm not going to do these meetings. Right. Uh, and this guy comes in and he's like, man, I'm, I'm from Mexico. And like, I, I didn't come for money. I've been washing dishes for two years. I'm a hustler. And I'm like staring him in the eye. Like I'm just about to not talk to anybody, but like, I really want to believe in what you're saying. Right. I told him, I said, meet me here tomorrow at 7 a.m. And he did. And I got him to go knock on some doors. And then I told him to do something else. And he completely disappeared. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. Like, you know, it's just like the world's messing with me. Um, this is the one person that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to believe in. And then that happened. Um, I forgot what I was, where I was going with that. But uh, I, I was just curious if you have any strategies or tactics oh, around yeah. trying to determine, you know, who you yeah. spend your time with, because that, that can be a challenge. No. And I'm working through it. Like, so the other story I was going to tell you is another guy called me and I just met with him. And I was like, you know, if you want to meet with me, it's 150 bucks. And like, I was just like, you know what? Just at least get paid for my time. And, and if he's ser- And so he came in here, we met and he had his check right there. And I'm like, and he was about to pay. I'm like, dude, you don't need to pay me. Like, I just felt bad about it. You know, I just met yeah. with all these other people for the last four years. I'm not going to make you pay me. So I was like, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I met with a, another guy that's a super like high net worth guy in Austin and he said, if someone wants to meet with me, I give him three books and I tell him, go write me a report on all three of these. And, you know, one in a hundred meet with me. And I respect that. And I, and I would be the one that absolutely did that if I, if that's what I wanted to meet with. Um, but I don't want to do that either. So I don't, I don't know, man. I, I wish I knew. Uh, it's just something I'm thinking through in a process. I'm, but I guess, you know, maybe just, you don't always have to meet in person. Like it's like, Hey, let's, let's talk for five minutes or 10 minutes. Like, how can I help you? And the people, I guess when I think about it, like the people that really are going to take the help, uh, they're going to keep showing up and I don't need to worry. I, I can't, I can't lead everyone there. They got to do it themselves and hopefully I can help a little bit. Yeah. Love it. Uh, what's, uh, what's something that you're really just crushing right now in your business? Growth, man. You know, we just grow. I mean, we had, uh, I think we had 12 agents two years ago. And we're that's uh, impressive we're, yeah and it's i just i just like you said you know whether uh whether this is as unique or not i just believe it is i believe that there's a clear uh vision and and uh goal here at tre that i don't really see exists in many other places and so the more we can get that out there and truly be in the agent's uh, best interest to say come here and get more out of this for yourself. If we can be a part of it, great. If not, like you still be a part of this. We're not going to, we're not trying to get rich off a 15 K cap. Right. Um, I mean, I split that with my partner and then that's a revenue number. Uh, but we can get rich if we buy properties together and and you don't, you're not required to do that. And you know, if they go wholesale, we don't make a percentage of the wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just think that, uh, it's, it's the growth side because of, we're really clear on, on what we're trying to do. Uh, and I do believe it's very, very unique. Yeah. Love it. Well, Matthew, this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you spending some time with us and sharing your journey. Um, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, learn more about what you have going on? All over uh, social media, man. Uh, just look up Typhke Real Estate, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we are super easy to get a hold of. You can look me up on Facebook. And uh, I appreciate you having me as well, man. I, uh, yeah, my pleasure. Hopefully, hopefully this is some value for some people and, and I care and I want to help and uh, here to be a resource. Well, it definitely comes across that way. It's genuine, that's for sure. And uh, if, uh, if any of you want to connect with Matthew or his team, uh, uh, Tyfke is uh, spelled T-E-I-F-K-E. And so look him up on social. We'll have a couple links to connect with him in the show notes. So uh, go down in the show notes right now, click on one of those links and, and connect with Matthew. Matthew, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your journey. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. You too, man. Thank you so much.